<laughs> Doesn't it just wind you up sideways when you see a YouTuber put together a Threadripper or Epic system and they put windows on it? Hey everybody, welcome back to Linux Weekly, daily Wednesdays where we sit back, relax, take that midweek break, talk about some of the fun things going on in the world of Linux. I'm Vince Stone, joined every week by Jill Bryant and everyone <laughs> at home watching us live on mm-hmm. Twitch, Shot Realm, Dynamic. Talking about a bunch of things in the pre-show. If you get a chance, go back and listen to that. Uh, that's available for patrons. Um, but, Jill, you are talking about scale, and you were talking about mugs, because the only reason people go to scale is to get mugs for their collection, right? They, <laughs> they show up on day one to scale, they get two mugs, and they leave immediately, right? <laughs> no, that's not the only reason why, but they are they are nice. These uh, I'm holding up one of my favorite uh, Southern California Linux Expo mugs from Scale 17X. <laughs> But yeah, so that is coming in just two weeks, Ben. <laughs> I can't believe it. And uh, we actually had a fun Linux Gamecast party at Strider's house, the creator of Lutris. We had our, our annual before scale uh, pre uh, Linux Gamecast party and, and a nice LGC viewing party. So that's always fun. And we hadn't done it in a while. So we had a lot of fun. It was Mir, Steve Husband. Uh, Matthew, and me, and Alan. <laughs> and so, Alan, yeah. We, yeah. You, you guys were posting some pictures in the uh, chat when we were doing the show on Saturday. Did we have a good yeah. time? Yes, we had a great time. It was wonderful. Nice. And... Uh, I know you, uh, everybody <laughs> popped in for the after show. We played a little bit of Jackbox after uh-huh. that. Uh-huh. That was fun. <laughs> now, before we get started, I believe Jill's got a scale commercial for you. Yeah. <laughs> so, yes, in just two weeks is Scale 20X, or the 20th Annual Southern California Linux Expo. And it will take place on March 9th through 12th, 2023, at the Pasadena Convention Center in Pasadena, California. And make sure to use promo code CHIX for 50% off your scale registration. Thanks to the Linux Chicks of Los Angeles, my group. And you can find me at the Linux Chicks LA booth, number 234, which is also next door to the Destination Linux booth and around the corner from the Lutris booth. Woohoo, party! (laughs) So um, also Glorious Egg Roll, a well-known Proton and Lutris dev. For those of you that watch uh, Linux Gamecast content, you know who that is. (laughs) He is coming and will be helping Strider at the Lutris booth, as well as our wonderful patron Alex Sipes in chat. And Empty is coming back too. Woohoo! Good to have Empty back. In the house. <laughs> Yay. And go to uh, SoCalLinuxExpo.org for all the information and to register and all the details. There we go. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Always got to do scale commercials uh, <laughs> before scale. <laughs> Just got to make sure you get everything in. You can't leave them hanging. You can't be like, oh, yeah. and by the way, Google it for the rest of your information and tickets and everything. Where do you go? Do you go to the website to get tickets? Can I get tickets today? Yes. You can go to the website right now and uh, put in those promo that promo code CHIX for 50% off. Indeed. <laughs> That's good. You guys are going to have a bunch of time. Uh, good time. I look forward to seeing all the uh, content and pictures and everything. Oh, yeah. Uh, we're we're looking forward to it. Flying yes. out of that. <laughs> Tons in chat, yes. <laughs> so one thing I've been playing around with, I, I, I tend to talk about it each and every time that I have to update Jitsi. And, you know, there's usually a security update or something like you update your Jitsi instances if you run them yourself. Because they always change things. They do. And they don't document changes. You, you get to find out what you do. You go to the issue tracker on GitHub and go, oh, let's see what people are complaining about and try to find your issue and open a new one. One thing that's been bugging me for a while is... Uh, Jill sees it. You guys don't typically see it, but uh, we've been having an issue with Jitsi as a whole. It's not just me when you go to. Yeah. It makes mm-hmm. you feel better when you show up and like, oh, everyone's having this problem, aren't they? Mm-hmm. Mm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> There's a thing Jitsi does called Ben with estimation. And if it can't figure out uh, between two parties, and there's a couple of ways to like shrink that down. You can tell Jitsi to prefer VP9 over VP8 or H264 or a, you know, try to reduce bandwidth. We've got plenty of bandwidth. Um, but it's just Jitsi you can't figure things out. And there's a flag that you can throw in there to disable that. And nice. it's just finding it, right? <laughs> no, I found it. I don't know. I know where to put it. And then come to find out after all this time, 
the syntax was wrong because they changed the syntax for like how it needs to be spaced out in order for it to function. Now you think <laughs> to yourself, well, then you clearly didn't pay attention and see the error that was thrown when uh, it's like it didn't throw an error. They just processed it and said, yep, uh, that's fine. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I think maybe that might be fixed. Yay! A little excited about that. But here's something. Here's your little PSA from Twitter. If you use OBS with a jacket, there is a commit number 8,279 that prepends all devices created by the Jack and Pin client with OBS Studio. Now, this might be an issue if you have setups like mine, where you have multiple routings between multiple machines that are hooked up and devices and whatnot. Why? Because if you use AJ Snapshot or you use Carla, any type of session manager, it's going to break all of that. And you're going to have to manually rewire it, then resave that session. So I spent an afternoon doing that, and I Aww. have to spend another afternoon doing that. That's no a little fun. baby session. <laughs> it's not. It's no, not. And I don't ben. see the added benefit, because if you're at the point where you're using Jack and OBS people, you, you don't need it to inform you that this is, in fact, OBS. Like, we're good. We're good at that point. But I don't mm -hmm. know. Maybe somebody was uh, thinking about this is mm -hmm. a commit. It's already in OBS, so it will be in the next version. So that's something to keep in the back of your mind if you're using Jack and OBS when it breaks. Because, you know, we're all human and you're sitting there going, I'll deal with that when I deal with that. So this memory, hi, it's, it's Vin from a couple of weeks ago. That's what you need to fix. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we're going to pop up and talk about that. So, yeah, outside of that, we played uh, Track Mania yesterday. We yes, did we did. It was a uh, fun, challenging tracks, and there were. There was about three I didn't get through, but I know uh, with enough practice, I will get through those maps <laughs> and maybe be victorious. I don't know. <laughs> well, I mean, you did some maps last week, didn't you? Yes, I did. <laughs> I and you those did were too. hard max too. Hard maps. I think I won one. Hard max. <laughs> hard max. But I came in second and third a lot. <laughs> so that was good. Yeah. You won one. Yeah. <laughs> won uh, next to last time. Very, very advanced uh, way of keeping score we do on Fridays. Mm -hmm. But yeah, good time. Um, I'm going to have to pick out, there was like an extra map I threw in there just to mess with everyone, to have some yeah. fun. Because I was like, oh, this map's so silly. <laughs> that was the ultimate LOL map then. <laughs> it was just a mean, mean map. It was mean all the way from the beginning to the end. And um, <laughs> then people started, no, immediately like Ogi and... Um, Beastwick were like, leave it in. It's so hard. We hate it. Because, you know, they love that punishment. Mm -hmm. But <laughs> uh, something's got to go. We, we got to trim it back down to 14. For Friday, you can come hang out. Play with us if you want. Uh, Filthy.LennoxTeamCast.com for all that information. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, and thanks for everybody who comes uh, hanging out with me on Sundays. Yeah, that's been awesome, Ben. People are um, coming in, asking mm -hmm. questions. Jill stops in for about 35 seconds and goes, yeah. hey, bye. I'm sorry, I got to go to work. <laughs> That's just how you show up in chat, yeah. man. Come on. <laughs> yeah. But what was nice is because you broadcasted later, I was able to come in. I was watching like the last uh, 30 minutes or so after work. So that was that worked out nice. <laughs> that was, um, yeah, meet space work stuff got in the way. So I didn't even get started streaming um, the show until like two. So yeah, that was one of those like 11.45 midnight releases for Linux Gamecast, but it got done and it's good. So if you have any questions about content creation under Linux and all the other stuff that I get up to, feel free to pop mm -hmm. in. It's just chill stream. You know, it's not a, Hey guys, you know, whiz bang and all that. Let's try to entertain. We're just sitting back getting work done and you can follow along. Now let's talk about exciting things like Linux kernels. Yeah. So Linus Torvalds just released the Linux kernel 6.2 last Sunday and it has lots of major new hardware updates, performance enhancements and improvements is as usual for every Linux kernel. But this one is particularly special. <laughs> um, Linus also urged developers and users to test the new cut of the kernel saying, maybe it's not a sexy LTS release like 6.1 ended up being, but all those regular pedestrian kernels want some test love too. So, and, and he, you know, Linus, he always uh, never makes a big deal of it, but this one is actually kind of a big deal. 
And one of the, the big deals with this release is that the Linux kernel now features native support for Intel's Arc GPUs. Woohoo! <laughs> awesome. And now you don't have to go through all the hard, um, hard steps of uh, getting those uh, GPUs to work. They'll just work out of the box. And there's major Nouveau driver updates, which include much better performance for GeForce RTX 2000 series, GPUs, and newer, and just all, all around faster performance with the, the open source Nouveau drivers. And there's also support for PS5's DualSense Edge controller and for PS4's DualShock 4 controller, which a lot of people in our community use. <laughs> so that, that's a really nice feature. And uh, Linux kernel also, Linux kernel 6.2 now features the Excel Compute Accelerator subsystem that is intended for use by AI acceler accelerators. And Excel is a framework of device drivers for compute acceleration devices to be used for machine learning, deep, deep learning, and other you know, sim similar use cases. And Linux 6.2 is the first version of the Linux kernel to offer mainline support for the Apple M1 Pro, Macs, and Ultra chips, as work done by Asahi Linux developers was upstreamed. So this is, this is a huge release for the Linux kernel. I'm excited. <laughs> There's a bunch of stuff on the Mac front, a lot of stuff that's been glassed over because 6.2 adds CPU, CPU frequency support to mm -hmm. the M1s, which that is super neat. Device tree for newer hardware, HDMI out on the Mac Studio, and Bluetooth support. Now, how much would you pay? A lot because you bought a Mac. I mean, you're used to it. 6.2 also gives us Odroid M1 support. Yay! Cool. Pretty <laughs> neat. Pretty neat. And as Jill said, the Intel Art graphics should work out of the box. And on top of that, I know you're going to love this, Linus. You are. Um, NVIDIA 30X support out of the box will technically work just really slowly. So no, you're not going to be playing games on it quite yet. Yeah. <laughs> but we are seeing some of the benefits from the NVIDIA open source. Yes. Drivers. Which Exciting. is neat. Which is neat. Yeah. 30 series Ampere. And uh, is there anything else I saw in there that was kind of crazy? Yeah. Raspberry Pi 4K 60 support, which. Okay. I, if you want to run 4K6, I've never thought about that. Like, I don't think I'd ever want to try to punish a Raspberry Pi quite that much. Yeah. But <laughs> then again, I, here's the thing. I assumed it could do it, Jill. I, didn't you always yeah. just think maybe, maybe there was an issue with that? But the PlayStation controller support, that's neat to see that in there. Um, yeah. Absolutely. I haven't looked into it. I thought about building it last night. Um, I was going to look at the uh, real-time patch set and compile it and get everything set up but it's like yeah i'll get around to it mm -hmm. i'm waiting on the um lts that's all i'm waiting on um, yeah i know you need the lts for there stability. is uh, some confusion <laughs> I, I don't like moving parts man yeah <laughs> but i run dead being testing right now too so we got a bunch of things going on uh but i want an official uh, lts on kernel.org so i can have that and just slam it in but <laughs> up next yeah, so Linux kernel developers have debated removing support for Intel and HP's now officially defunct Itanium IA64 RISC platform. Well, we talked about the, this a couple of weeks ago. Joe. From the project. Yeah, we did. <laughs> we did. And they're like, hey, you remember the Itanic, the Itanium, that thing that Intel tried to fix computing with? Like, they yeah. really did. They're like, let's just do a clean rewrite. Yeah. And uh, no one bought into it, except for HP. Hi, HP. Yeah. HP. Well, Intel dis discontinued uh, their support two years ago. So, and what what's kind of nice is Linus Torvalds said that I am not a fan of IA64 as an architecture, but it's a bit sad to remove it entirely. It's not like it's been a huge maintenance burden in general. And this is so true. He he also uh, brought up uh, the same with uh, Deck Alpha support and uh, in the kernel and. But that is fortunately being supported by the community. Thank goodness. <laughs> so, but what's really awesome is a physicist and Debian developer, John Paul Adrian Gleibitz, came to the rescue and he posted, I definitely have the time to look after the architecture as I am also maintaining it in Debian. 
And he even admitted, I always have an Itanium server ready for testing kernels that I can power on and control remotely via its built-in management system. So this is really nice. It's just nice to have a developer step up and say, I will, you know, help out with this and uh, make sure that things are working correctly. <laughs> And this, this is actually a big deal because, in you know, in 2008, Venn, uh, Itanium was the fourth most deployed microprocessor architecture for enterprise class systems. How many years ago was 2008? <laughs> it has been quite a long time, yes. <laughs> How many months go by when they completely swap out all the hardware in enterprise? Yeah. Months? Yeah. <laughs> Monthly? <laughs> no, weekly? Sometimes daily? <laughs> Titanium's been dead, uh, and this yeah. comes to somebody I like weird at formats. You know, I used to install and deploy Sun hardware. Like that was my yeah. thing, man. Like exotic million-dollar big iron systems. Huge fan of them. And Intel got a taste of that. They did that, but nobody uses. No, Itanic is not being used for any work anymore. Yeah, it's something for YouTubers to buy. Mm -hmm. and, it's just uh, like my apart. our beloved uh, venue have one too. My my beloved deck alphas. Oh yeah. Uh, uh, I do know places that are still using them um, in production, but it's so few and far between. Yeah, and they're, they're not doing very well because they're the type of place that's still using a deck alpha in production. I'm like, that's not yeah. very good management. It's yeah. Like, you guys must really suck as a company. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I know on the back end uh, in, in, at NASA and JPL, they still do use them. <laughs> I strongly doubt that. <laughs> I've seen seen one working at JPL. So it might be happy. powered on. I don't know what it's yeah. doing. <laughs> uh, to support old uh, 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 spacefaring architecture <laughs> with old versions of software. It was running Windows NT. Yeah. <laughs> um, Debian. <laughs> I swear. I would strongly doubt it was running Linux. Like, I would almost bet money it wasn't running Linux. Um, probably HP UX. Yeah, it was, it was actually True64. Mm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so there is a fair question that we can ask is, what is a lap doc? And this is something that I brought up right at the beginning of the show. Yeah. But I want to know what a lap doc is. I read about it. <laughs> and I thought about it, and I looked. I even looked at some animations. I'm like, I don't know what this laptop thing is. So let's go to the website. This is a, the latest bit a kit from Purism. Announcing the laptop mm -hmm. kit. All right. Do we know what it is? Um, <laughs> let's, let's I kind of do. <laughs> no. Well, I think we all kind of do after we've yeah. researched it, Jill. Yes, this is true. <laughs> we have to rewind. From when we first see this. This is the introductory video. I'm like, okay, so are you trying to sell me on this, uh, you know, this is a little 3D rendered convergence device. And we've talked about convergence devices. Like, this is the dream, right? Wireless, you just stick it in, you get your desktop on a monitor, right? This is how the system has to work, though. And I brought this up, you know, real convergence. It has to work like that. No wires. You, you can't have a spaghetti nightmare, an octopus of a cable floating around in your desk. That's never yeah. going to sell. Everybody's tried it. I think the last people to give up on it was Samsung. I mean, it's, everything's going to get wireless. Mm -hmm. So that's their solution. Okay. So what is a laptop? And I'm looking at this picture. I'm like, well, is it a laptop? My first thought was, okay. I think what they've done is they've, they've made a holder for your phone so you can use your phone as a second screen with your laptop. This is my first thought. Mm -hmm. This is what I'm looking at. I'm like, <laughs> that's silly and you're going to break your phone but no 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 what this is what we're looking at is a handy way to turn your Librem 5 into a laptop that's right so this is like one of those dummy shells that's got a screen in it it's got a 13.3 inch so maybe like you know a slightly large tablet but 13.3 is not really a big screen mm. in modern days for tablet 1920 by 1080 16.9 ips Touch screen, so that's kind of neat. Yeah, very nice. This shell, it has no CPU, RAM, storage, or anything like that, and it works with a Librem 5 or the Librem 5 USA and turns it into, air quotes, a computer. And it does <laughs> come with a 44-watt-hour battery, so you can use it to charge your phone. And it's got some speakers. Yeah. Oh, I'm like, 
Yeah, all right. And they keep saying kit, like you have to assemble it yourself. You don't. Um, it And it's got a nice little magnetic mount and a shorter USB cable. So you just kind of stick that in, you plug it in, click, 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 and you break your phone because it's hanging off the side of the thing. You better have a desk for this <laughs> is all I'm saying. Yeah. Um, I don't care which way it's supposed to work. Uh, that That's just asking to be snapped off. This. Can I? Can we zoom in and enhance? You know what? Let's just open this image in a new tab. <laughs> okay. And we're going to zoom in and enhance it. This USB-C connector. And like those things are dodgy to begin with. <laughs> yeah, easy. It pop out easy sometimes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, I'm, not, I'm not poo-pooing on the idea. I'm just, we're just talking, we're talking reality here, right? So yeah. here's another way that you can use it. Like, and again, I don't. Mm, like a handheld tablet. It's pretty like, cool. Maybe. Uh, here's the only problem I have with it. How much is a Librem phone? Okay. The new Librem 5 USA phone mm -hmm. is uh, $2,000. So yeah. Okay, so in comparison, then I guess I should say in comparison, Jill. <laughs> yes, it's it's inexpensive. <laughs> this thing is practically free at three thirty nine. Yeah. yeah, very true. And I think it's kind of a nice, you know, it it it's very uh, uh, very unique. What is this? Um, what is this? <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, um. Magnetic holder for the Librem. I, I, I can make things up too, Jill, but I yeah. this is not addressed anywhere. This is no, like, okay, it isn't. It isn't. I we get we get this photo and it's doing the thing, and we got this photo, and it's like, okay, we see that we can do that. Then we just got this guy hanging out, and it's like, yo, hey, here's a photo to have fun with. Guess what this is? We'll tell you maybe when you're older. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So this, you know, basically, Ven, this is just, it's a fancy dock, like you would use for extra ports on your laptop or Steam Deck, mm. but it also includes- It's a fancy dock for your mobile phone, John. Yeah. Yeah. This is true. Yes. And, but it includes a monitor and it's, um, all the parts are inside a uh, laptop looking shell. 13 inch. It's pretty sweet. Very small one. 13 inch. <laughs> but I do think it's a, it's a neat idea. Mm -hmm. I was- you know what? I could tolerate the idea up until the point where it has like the bendy thing to snap off of, to break a USB C cable yeah. and stuff. I'm like, that's that's just bad design. Like, that's not going to survive. That survives. That survives me. That survives you. That doesn't survive anybody in a family with kids, and it doesn't survive in any situation mm -hmm. where you have cats. Yeah, that <laughs> knock things off the top of your desk. If that thing's <laughs> broke immediately. Yeah. Well, maybe the next iteration they can use. Uh, um, uh, wireless via Wi-Fi or Bluetooth for connectivity. That would be cool. It's got to be future. wireless. Yeah. This is like, none of this ever works until everything's wireless, which True. sucks. But yeah. I mean, that's just where we are. It's like, you know, looking at it from a consumer thing. Yeah. Yeah. That would terrify me. Um, to have, I'm just thinking about anything like supported weight wise. Maybe that's what that arm is. Like it takes some of the strain off of, um, Mm hmm. Extra support. It, it seemed much heavier duty than the initial one that was shown, unless that was the one that was shown that we didn't we couldn't see it. I. Uh, it looks like sure. it's just a plug that plugs in there and it, it's like a really stout, you know, like metal. Yeah. You know, that foldable like mic gooseneck cable type stuff. Yeah. And it's built in there and uh, like I'm just not seeing the. It's like they just got it touched and matched up. This is just like maybe I don't know. Maybe this is a magnet. A magnet. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. I mean, it looks magnetic. <laughs> I don't know. Um, output ports, input ports. That's all I want to know. I all I need to know is what what be this thing. And, uh, <laughs> it's okay. it, you know what it says in the con contains magnetic mount. Yeah. So that yeah. So I guess that's the magnetic mount. <laughs> Maybe. I don't. See, I have questions. See, <laughs> I have questions. Like, why is this a bad 3D render? Hmm. I don't know. Um, good luck with that. Yeah. I don't know. I, I've heard some very mixed things about people who own their Librem phones from Libra phone owners. So. Best of luck. Yeah. Yeah. All hmm. right. So. Check this out. We're going to talk about building your own headphones. But before that, we are going to shamelessly 
<laughs> chill everything we do. Patreon.com forward slash Linux Gamecast. Come hang out with us. Uh, we got a bunch of membership levels. This supports what we do. We don't read a bunch of ads. In fact, we read negative ads during all the shows. Um, just because I'm violently against that, I wanted to do something that was just organic. I'm yeah. <laughs> also, I like the freedom and ability to talk smack about companies, which has been very <laughs> important to me. And um, it just is, man. You know, if I got a, if I got a problem with somebody, I'm like, oh man, we got to be careful. Why? Because they're our sponsor. I'm like, Yolo. Yeah, no sponsors here. <laughs> You're a boss. Our you're patrons. a sponsor. Yeah. And that's what you want. You know, it's, it's a <laughs> weird business model. Then we turn around and give everything for free. Like, here, yeah. if you like it, you know, mm -hmm. kick it. So it works. It keeps us honest, keeps us small, keeps us scrappy. But more importantly, it keeps it fun. Patreon.com forward slash Linux Gamecast. Got a bunch of reward tiers if you choose to do that. We also have live and uncut series of this podcast. If this sounds mm -hmm. good and you're listening to this or you're watching this, you're like, man, I'd like the full experience. You know, something a bit longer than 30 minutes. Got that covered. You get a custom RSS feed over at Patreon with video included and also mm -hmm. an MP3 audio format. Um, access to our Discord, access to our show notes, a bunch of little, you know, just bonus things. Like, hey, come on. Up to and including, I don't know, probably something pretty big. I think you can buy your way onto the show, but don't do that. That'd be a bad idea. <laughs> Unless you want to, right? Yeah. <laughs> you know, if you're a Microsoft executive, buy your way onto the show. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that would be interesting. We do have a corporate overlord uh, sponsor segment for Patreon, but I mean, you don't really get to like tell us to do anything, which is like, hey, this show's brought to you. And like, that's your own fault. So <laughs> do that. Coming out with us, twitch.tv forward slash Linux Um Do you want to thank Mir for the 40 month resub? Yeah. On Twitch. Thank you, Mir. Yesterday. So yeah. I, I keep track of these things sometimes. Mm -hmm. We got a web zone over at Linux Teamcast. Plenty of things. You know, we have the studio wish list. Uh, Jill's got a wish list. Uh, we got merch, all that fun stuff. Uh, I'm this year at some point going to be putting together a uh, epic rig for the studio. I'm thinking about it's going to be fun to try to build that. Sweet live like we did with a rectangle and learn about all the ins and outs because you know yeah doesn't it just wind <laughs> you up sideways when you see a youtuber put together a thread ripper or epic system and they put windows on it no oh, i know it always makes me cringe <laughs> <laughs> even people that you know know better right yeah exactly Level exactly one text. yeah i know <laughs> yes here's to you <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> what are you doing <laughs> so I, I i look fun to um doing that with everybody it'll, it'll be fun to try to make a uh tamed gaming system because epic epic's a system on a chip you know mm -hmm. there's no chipset in that critter it's just like sitting there so there's all <laughs> kind of weird things to go break she's yeah. got a bunch of plushies and stuff uh and she's still got a keyboard holder and cups that she desperately needs in order to yes. survive yes <laughs> more penguins the better Right. I got to add to my collection of over 100 penguins that is most of them in view behind me. <laughs> oh, so we got, I think that's yeah. the thing. We got merch. We got a store. Uh, if you get anything for the studio, uh, you end up back here doing that. Come hang out with me on Sundays when I'm editing the show to fill in your Linux questions. And I, uh, I got a couple of things planned. I got like, pre-production stuff i still got a pedro's got a good article pedro and jordan have worked and hammered out a, a good article on um that uh, 3d printed controller the uh oh yeah yeah the alpaca alpaca <laughs> and they're still waiting on that bum that does the video editing to finish up pedro's video so they can release it so as soon as that jack hole gets done editing the video and he gets it all together we'll uh nice put it up and get it out for everybody. So that, that'll be a good uh, like breakdown of uh, a controller that you can build yourself. Very nice. And you guys can support Pedro and Jordan also with their wish list on Amazon. Correct. They have lots of fun goodies in there. <laughs> you can get, get, go get Jordan some more exercise equipment and some uh, uh, Pedro some more Jordan just tech. bought a Steam Deck. <laughs> yes, he did. I was I was proud of him. Finally, he got a Steam Deck, or Why are you he was proud able to. Of him being a good consumer. <laughs> yeah. 
part part of the capitalist system. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was joking with him last night because every time we buy something new, the mm-hmm. improved version of the thing we just bought comes out. It comes out, yeah, and they've yeah. already made the announcement for the second version. And that was a uh, yeah, yeah. Was, uh, <laughs> the second I buy the an Arc A seven seventy, they're going to release the Arc A seventy seventy point one. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, just dumb stuff like that. But we do thank you for your support. Um, share the show if you get a chance. Watch it, whatever. Like, subscribe, leave a comment. All the all the fun things that you're supposed to do on the social stuff. Ta-da, there we go. We got Odyssey channels. Yeah, we're an Odyssey cool. too. It's always <laughs> weird because um, people leave comments on our Odyssey stuff. I'm like, hey, I, when did you guys switch over here? And it's like, I don't know, six years ago. Man. Six years ago, a long yeah. time. And <laughs> you're the one just discovering Odyssey, not me. Um, in the library and all that. So yeah, we're on Spotify too. <laughs> we're in Spotify video. Yeah. That's sweet. I, I watched LWW last week on Spotify. <laughs> That's a way to do it. Yeah. So, all right. Are we good? Can we talk about the open source bloopy headphones? Absolutely. All right. That's what they look like. They look so bloopy. Yeah, they're so cute. I like the red uh, slash orange color. I don't know. Um, me being me, the first thing I notice, I'm like, okay, so you got a Scarlet 2i2 and you got an art headphone amplifier. <laughs> yes. I'm that guy. The, the stuff that's blurred out on the left, that's what those two things are. <laughs> so uh, this is, look, it's purple. Yeah, I love the purple. I'd like pink ones, actually. I don't know. I don't know what we were talking about. That. So if you want some Ploopy headphones, that's right, from the creator of the Ploopy trackball we've talked about several times on the show. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, this might come as no surprise then. This is a 3D printed open source pair of headphones, set of headphones, singular headphones, why do we call them headphones? I guess because maybe they're two, right? You can't buy a headphone. It is yeah. the mono. Ploopy, what is this? So this is an amplifier based on a Raspberry Pi 2040, which is not impossible to get like a Raspberry Pi 4, a TI uh, PCM 3060, so it's 24-bit uh, DAC, and it's got an amplifier circuit built in, firmware, written in C, completely open source, and a couple of options. You can pick from a... Do it yourself or uh, pre-built, which is kind of yeah, neat, pretty right? nice. Um, the the uh, Ploopy headphones uh, full kit um, with all the parts can be pre-ordered for one hundred and forty nine dollars and ninety nine cents uh, Canadian. That's not a bad price. And the fully assembled uh, Ploopy headphones can be pre-ordered for two hundred and ninety nine dollars and ninety nine cents Canadian. So very reasonably priced, actually. For, and I bet you these are sound really good, Van. <laughs> Yay. No, Jill, they're not made out of a 70-year-old uh, single-source <laughs> free-range wood. That, yeah. <laughs> that was yeah, only transported a- by fixies, Aww. by a person drinking PBR and smoking American spirit. Yeah. Well, I think the talk, uh, we, we were talking with our patrons earlier about 3D printing, and this is a good use of that. You know, 3D print your headphones. <laughs> and you can do just that, or you can buy the uh, the the kit you can assemble, or a fully assembled one. So it's pretty pretty sweet. And I, I I'd put these in the notes because yeah, Vin and I have talked about the uh, the Ploopy uh, open source trackballs uh, trackball mice. They have several different variations, and they also have a regular mouse too. And uh, but it's it's nice to see them getting into headphones. <laughs> it's pretty cool. Do not flash new firmware until you verify it are working. <laughs> Many steps in the assembly are critical. Ah, oh, man, come on. Give me like one non-critical step. Be like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> so, yeah, we're looking at the GitHub page. And um, it looks mm-hmm. like our friend from Bloopy is learning about uh, the slow, disastrous train wreck, which is productizing um, something that you're shipping to people. Because people will find new and unique ways to do things incorrectly once you give yeah. them, um, especially the raw ingredients. Well, they have a really good tutorial, So that, and, and they did before with their oh, track that, balls. Oh, that, that, that's not even a road bump in the, the stupid train, Jill. <laughs> uh, they okay. plow right through it. <laughs> well, yeah, you do need a soldering iron. You need you need several parts to put it together. They're like, so I ate the first two pieces. Um, <laughs> dude, uh, yeah, it's a micro switch. I mean, this looks easy enough to do. This is, this is something I'd be comfortable giving like a 10-year-old or 7-year-old uh, as a Absolutely. weekend project. 
Yeah. To put together well, wood. But, you know, would I use them? I mean, for they're not for me. They probably sound fine for like listening to music and stuff like that. Mm hmm. That's all I got to say about it. Yeah. I guess if we'd have to uh, uh, buy a pair and, and test them for monitoring for have podcasts. Have to build a pair. Yeah. Or build a pair. <laughs> that, that would be actually more fun. I'll, uh, yeah, we can 3D print like a man bun, put it on the back so I look like a real audio file. And, yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh, man. Uh, I like that the firmware is open source. I like that Absolutely. You, know, you can just get this, build it if you want. And more importantly, you know, it comes in like two flavors. I like the idea of a kit. You know, mm -hmm. that's a great present for somebody. Yeah. Yeah. It really is. Yeah. Just, Especially, you know, the parents want something to do with their kids. This is. This is and anything that involves, you know, building, making, um, learning a new operating system for the ki for kids and adults is, is teach me how to use soldering iron. Yeah, just like using I, basic electronics is great. <laughs> don't remember, like being probably yeah. age five or six. Like my mom, like like the, all right, we're learning how to solder. Like yeah. I, I remember, like I was getting those modules from my mom, like this using hers. I still have her soldering iron. Um, oh, nice. Mm -hmm. And learning how to do that. Like those skills are invaluable when you get older because people look at like you're some type of moon wizard and when you're like, yeah, I can fix that. Like, yeah, I know. You know, and I... <laughs> like even basic things, Jill, I had this uh, with a group of friends, uh, probably what's it been? Let's see. I don't know what month this is. We're just going to say four to five months ago. I was over at their house for a house party and I'm like, oh, cool. You guys still have a DVD player. How vintage, how retro. And they're like, yeah, but it doesn't work. No. Why, why does it work? And he's like, well, somebody put a disc in it upside down and we can't ever get it out. So we're, oh. gonna throw it, we're going to throw it away. We just never get around to it. So, oh boy. Yeah, we're, <laughs> we're at that level. And this is like, yeah. you know, some late 20s, early 30s somethings. I'm like, do, do you guys have a screwdriver? So we all, we gathered around and we had an impromptu class on the system. Oh. You take something How out, do you take a it disc out? out of it. Yeah. yeah. Like, Did that one not have the emergency, you know, put the... No, uh, this is just a commercial emergency. DVD player. It didn't have any okay. of that. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> just burp, burp, and like, oh. and I'm like, yeah, look, it works again. So <laughs> it, it teach, it let, let your kids tear stuff apart is what yeah, I'm saying. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I, I learned how to solder with my grandmother building an AM radio Keith kit <laughs> in the 70s. <laughs> Yay. So that was my introduction. She was a rocket scientist for NASA, so that was I. That was something that she had to teach her grandkids <laughs> how to solder <laughs> and do electronics. Yeah, I always thought it was like odd because my mom was a mechanical engineer. Yeah, that's and cool. That was like <laughs> old school German stuff, dude. Um, uh -huh. Not really big into electronics, but knew how to solder. And she's like, "This is mm -hmm. a skill you're going to have to learn how to do." It's like, yeah. "Good, long as I don't have to learn to file stuff by hand, I'm fine." Yeah. <laughs> so, um, that's going to do it for this week. I think we are running right at 38 minutes. So it's time to bounce out of here and, um, let's bring up some credit music and do it, Jill. Yes. Yay. We have lots of lovely patrons to thank and all our different levels of patrons. <laughs> so Arthur wants to know, can I fit an audio file in VME inside? Now, here's what we need, is we need the audio file NVMEs that are sized for your Steam Deck to improve the audio quality. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but we're going to have to do a case mod and drill some holes in the back. Okay. So the capacitors can hang out, because ignorant people think capacitors make audio sound better for some reason. The bigger mm. the capacitor, the better it yeah. sounds. Yeah. They also think tubes make things sound better. They don't. There's a reason we quit using tubes. <laughs> episode 365 wow <laughs> all right yay we'll see you again next week mm -hmm. bye, -bye. bye everyone love you all <laughs>